just after 7am, we've arrived at the Batu Caves. Still dark. The, yeah, it's still dark. <laughs> the taxi here was nice and quick. It was at 7am, so it's a, not long been open. Well, no, it said when I looked on the internet, it said 7am, and it said 545 Oh, uh, okay. Well, it seems to be mainly Hindus here, and we can hear sort of chanting in the distance, so this could be quite a good experience coming at this time in the morning because it does seem to be people that are here to pray. So uh, I think what we'll do is we'll head up the steps and inside and then when we come back down we'll be able to get some better photographs of the stairs once the sun's come up because it's not due um, to get light for probably another 20 minutes or so. So um, let's head up see what's up there. The Batu Caves are said to be 400 million years old and sit in limestone hills just outside Kuala Lumpur. We took a 30 minute grab taxi which cost 30 ringgit each way. Once you climb the 272 steps, you'll be amazed at the size of the cave. It's around 100 metres to the top and has an opening to the sky above. It's an incredibly spiritual place with multiple shrines and temples. It attracts 1.5 million visitors a year, which is why we chose to visit early in the morning. Tour buses start to arrive at 8.30am, so beat the crowds for a better experience. The gold statue of Lord Murrigan is 43 metres tall and the largest of its kind in the world. Another great reason to visit the Batu Caves early is that it leaves the rest of the day for more sightseeing. We headed to Chinatown and after admiring some of the street art, took a walk along Petling Street Market. This street market has clothes, souvenirs and street food and is mega busy at any time of the day or night. We preferred the quieter indoor central market a few minutes walk away. This also has a number of shops and food options, but felt more comfortable to walk around and was a lot cooler in the humid weather. Around the corner from the central market is the Guandi Taoist Temple. Built in 1888, this is one of the most historic temples in all of KL. It is hidden away amongst more recent, larger architecture, but it's well worth visiting. It was Chinese New Year when we were there, and very busy with fires burning, the strong smell of incense and people lining up to pray. Tourists are made to feel very welcome here, despite it being a place of religious significance. This area of Chinatown is extremely diverse, with a Hindu temple right across the street. Walk five minutes towards the river and you'll see the famous mosque. It's incredible and extremely rare to experience three buildings of different religious denomination only 700 metres apart from each other. For lunch, we got one of the famous clay pots from Senki Restaurant in the heart of Chinatown. The Little India Brickfields area is another great part of the city. A bright, colourful street full of traditional Indian clothing shops, jewellery stores, food stalls and restaurants. It was now early evening and after all of our walking we felt as though we'd earned a refreshing cold beer. Alcohol is very expensive in Kuala Lumpur, but we found Supper Club on the main road in Brickfields. Their happy hour is from 5 until 8pm. A beer will set you back 10 to 12 ringgit and a glass of wine 15 ringgit, so around 2 to 3 pounds. It's a no frills pub with a friendly atmosphere, good music, and a great place to grab a drink before choosing which Indian restaurant to eat in. Thanks for watching.